Today we'll take a little break from all of the learning, all the tips and steps while you guys are actually working on your business. Today I'm going to talk more about the challenges that you may face while starting up your business, challenges that I've actually faced throughout my journey, and even challenges that I currently face to this day after seven years in business. <music> What's up, icons? It's the iconic fashion figure. And this is day eight of Heat Wave Hustle, your ultimate summer success boot camp. And I'm doing my best to give you a new video every single day for the month of June for this summer success boot camp, which is why you see me in the car. I am going to get this content out for you guys by any means necessary. So I'm out on the road right now, but I had to take a stop and charge. So I am going to get this video recorded for you. So let's talk about some of the challenges that you may face that I faced and even currently face today. The number one challenge, which I've mentioned multiple times and you probably already know, is that fear of starting. Hopefully, if you're following along with this boot camp, you've already started because we're deep in this already. If you saw day two's video where we created our schedule, you had to have started already if you're gonna do this by the end of summer. But everyone faces that fear of failure. It's normal. You're not alone in that. Don't beat yourself up just because you're afraid to actually start start is very common. I too have faced that fear and I had to learn to get over that fear. And a few of the things that I had to do to help myself get over that fear was not necessarily ignoring my dream goal, but being realistic with myself on what it was that I could actually achieve at that time, especially with my situation at that time. I knew that I didn't have a ton of funds. I knew that I didn't have a lot of experience, although I did have some experience in starting businesses because I had tried previously, which I'll touch on that in a moment but it was about being realistic with myself because I trust me was dreaming big and I thought I had to start big I've mentioned in previous videos start smaller and scale that's what I had to come with that realization was to start small and then scale to that dream business that I had planned out and that made things easier for me I've also talked to you guys about getting creative and thinking outside the box again because I knew I couldn't achieve that big business that I had already planned out for myself that I really had to think outside the box to actually get start. That creativity alone drives some motivation in me. It was almost like an adrenaline rush because it's like, okay, I'm about to do all this stuff. I'm about to make this happen by any means necessary. It helped to block out that fear because now I'm motivated and I'm focusing on something else. So it was like I turned my fear into motivation. And then one of the biggest things I had to do was ignoring all of the negativity around. I heard so much from people around me and why I shouldn't start and people that were actually afraid for me. So it was like, not only was I already feeling that fear I had people around me fearing my journey as well and it's like that's the last thing I need is for people around me to be afraid for me I'm already afraid like if anything I need someone around me that's going to push me to do it not negativity telling me of all the things that could happen that might go wrong that will go wrong because some people just truly believe that I was going to fail I had to remove all of that from around me and surround myself with people that were really going to push me which I really didn't have anyone around me then so I had to rely on myself so you may have to do that as well. Luckily for you, you have me. I am definitely going to push you to get started. I'll be there if you need anything. If you just need a shoulder to cry on to vent to, if you need help, of course, I'm going to be there. But you may have to switch up the people that are around you, especially while you're starting. You're trying to get focused because that negativity is not going to help with the fear that you're feeling at that time. Going along with that fear of failure, like I just mentioned, I started businesses previously, which were more so side hustles. But in my mind, you know, I was trying to start my business. They didn't really go that well. One actually wasn't that bad if I really put my time and energy into it, but I was in college at the time when I started it. And before I started uh, Nouveau Rich Apparel, I always looked at all those other businesses as failures because I never really took them anywhere. But I had to switch that mindset and realize that those actually weren't failures, especially the last one before Nouveau Rich Apparel. They were actually learning experiences. I got to learn a lot throughout those journeys. So instead of looking at those as failures, I had to realize that those were actually just learning experiences on my journey to get me to where I am right now. Like I needed those experiences to be where I am right now. They definitely were not failures. For those of you that may have already tried starting a business, 
turn this off because otherwise it'll keep going off. So for those of you that may have already started trying to run a business and you feel like it didn't work out and you already feel like you were a failure with your previous attempt, try to switch up that mindset and look back on what you learned from those experiences and what you can do differently from those experiences and continue on in your journey. Those were just stepping stones in your journey is all that was. They weren't failures. One of the really weird challenges that I could have never planned or prepared for that I had to face during my journey, and some of you may have as well, was the pandemic. Like, none of us expected that to come, but that definitely was an obstacle when it came to business. I mean, it had both as good and bad to it, but when the pandemic originally hit, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how to plan or prepare for that. I was scared. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen in my business at that time. It actually turned out for the better for me. The pandemic actually helped me when it came to business, but that was definitely a challenge, and I definitely had to change and tweak things to navigate that pandemic. And then most of my growth or hurt during the pandemic as well. So then that was also a time where I had to learn to navigate my growth also because that was something that I wasn't ready for, that I didn't have planned. And it was like overnight growth for me that I had to figure out along the way and something that I'm still learning to adjust to as I make changes to my business. And going along with the pandemic, one of the things that occurred for me personally, which actually became a challenge for me, was becoming a workaholic. Because things grew so fast, I didn't have have the bandwidth or the team to really help me keep up with that growth, I end up working day and night. Like I was working between 16, 18, sometimes 20 hours out of a day, literally sleeping for like an hour or two and then get up and go right back to work. It was literally like I was taking nap just to give myself a little bit of energy and then keep going. I became a workaholic and my entire life became about work. So I had to learn to have a personal life again, which is actually a challenge. It might not sound like it is, but it was actually difficult to learn to not make my entire life all about work. I mean, I have videos on here about work-life balance and things and because that really was a challenge for me that some of you may face as well. It might sound like a good challenge to some because that means your business is busy, so you're busy, but you'll burn out really fast. It can drain you. That's what you don't want to do. It'll actually become a challenge for you. It might feel good in the beginning because you're extremely busy, but you don't want to get too busy where you have no life at all. That was a huge challenge for me that I had to learn to navigate. Now for a challenge that I faced previously and still continue to face today, and that is hiring. Hiring can be very difficult because some people lie on their resume, so you don't know who you're hiring. Like trying to find good employees can be difficult. And I'm a nice person and I like to give people chances. And I'm that type of person where I feel like if no one gives a person a chance to gain experience, how are they supposed to get these jobs that are asking for five, ten years of experience. So I try to give people chances and just train them, but people will take advantage of you. So I had to learn to be careful in that aspect, being that nice person that I'm always trying to be, because at the end of the day, this is my business. Really, the people that I am interviewing and looking to potentially hire, like the process can be tough. You know, I've had some great employees. I've had some terrible ones. I've had an employee that called themselves trying to scam me, literally hired them. They started doing the work and then told me that they weren't actually turning in the work to me until I paid them. It only had been a few days of them working. Like your payday is bi-weekly. So you get paid in two weeks. Why do you think after three days of work that you're getting paid now? Like you'll deal with some crazy things with employees, but I don't want to focus just on the negative because I've had really good people working for me too, but hiring can be an obstacle as well. And you really have to take your time with trying to find good employees. Oh, and a challenge that I faced at the beginning of my business when I first started picking up. I had a shipment coming in. I think I mentioned this on my channel at one point where someone stole the product. So it was delivered, left outside by DHL and it wasn't supposed to be because it was supposed to have signature and someone stole the packages because this is when I started from home. So of course, you know, packages are going to my house. Someone stole it. Big box a product. You know how upset I was? I mean, I ended up getting my money back on it, but the orders that had to be canceled because they were private label orders. So those orders were specifically for customers. So now I've lost all this product that I cannot ship out. So that was tough. That was a bummer. And this was at the beginning where I really was starting to pick up and develop a business only to lose all that product. That was very frustrating. But at the end of the day, there's nothing I can do about it. I did definitely have to notify DHL, make sure they're not leaving the 
the packages it requires signature why would they leave the package and this was before the pandemic because i know during the pandemic there was a point in time where they can leave packages even if signature was required because of you know social distancing but this was before pandemic so there was no reason for that package to have been left and just another challenge that i continue to face that i know you guys will experience as well and that's simply growing pain growing pains is a real thing that you have to learn to adjust and navigate growing pains can look like so many different things that you don't even realize it you'll have these random things that's happening in your business that feels very difficult to navigate but a lot of times it's just because of your growth you'll feel it in the beginning when you literally go from having no customers to even having maybe 10 customers it's a growth there and then you're trying to tweak little areas in your business that you really weren't ready for and you didn't really think out because you don't expect it that will be still considered a growing pain even though maybe your business doesn't blow up you do now have customers and you may have to tweak your operations or things like that and one of the toughest things to deal with is overnight growth when it happens really fast and it's sudden and you're not ready for it that's why with the summer success boot camp i really want to get you guys started now before the holiday season so that way you can get all those kinks out before the rush so this is like your trial period your learning period to really figure out how to adjust to actually having the business and get yourself prepared for the rush so you can kind of ease into that rush because then the holiday time will come and you may experience even more growing pains and throughout your journey that's something that you'll face but don't let it deter you or make you want to give up because there are going to be a lot of times where you're going to feel like you want to give up you just can't you gotta push through now i don't want to say to just deal with everything that comes your way because there may be a time too where you may realize that it's just end of life for your business and it's time to close and let it go you know that feeling but give it a chance and really try to plan strategize come up with different things to navigate whatever hurdle you're dealing with if everything fails at that point and you feel like it's time to let it go then it may just be time to let it go and start something new now if you aren't aware yet this month in june i am doing a new video every day for heat wave hustle my ultimate summer success boot camp where i'm helping you guys get your businesses up and running and start growing those businesses before the busy holiday season this is day eight of heat wave hustle thank you guys for watching Thank you.